Hey everyone, I'm Seth and here we are at the shop and today I really want to talk to you guys about bike frame materials. So I got back into biking recently after almost 10 years of running my own company, uh, starting a family and I had an opportunity to get out of the business that I was in and now I have free time to ride again and the biggest question I had in my mind when I uh, started riding was okay, I probably need a new bike what am I going to do? And there's so many options out there. It was super overwhelming. And I know one of the biggest things when you guys are shopping for a bike is frame material. Back when I was hard into cycling, you know, over a decade ago, carbon fiber was a big thing then. And of course now it is even bigger and you're seeing it in lower to mid entry level bikes, as well as the top end elite race bikes. But I kind of have strong opinions about carbon fiber, why I think that other frame materials might actually be a better option for you. One of the first bikes I started building was my cross country hardtail bike. And I had ridden several carbon fiber mountain bikes and carbon fiber road bikes in the past. And there's just been some issues, mostly in terms of like the security while I'm riding a bike, is there going to be something that breaks? Uh, is one of the big reasons why I was always nervous of carbon fiber. And yeah, modern manufacturers are gonna say, well, carbon fiber is stronger than all those other materials now because we have such great techniques for carbon fiber construction, but there's still so many unknowns in carbon fiber, especially um, if you're a consumer who's looking to do something budget friendly, you might be looking for carbon fiber alternatives on eBay or Amazon that are maybe not from the main large bike manufacturers. And that's where you can get into some sketchy stuff. In the industry that I used to be in, I dealt in a lot of product finishes, coatings, adhesives. And one of the parts of carbon fiber that makes me nervous is that of course you have carbon fiber, the actual material, but then you have resins that are actually bonding everything together. And there's so many quality issues that can arise from incorrect resin preparation. Um, you know, if you're mixing multi parts of resin together and you get a mix off by a tiny percentage, it really can affect the strength of that resin as well as its longevity. And carbon fiber right now, you don't know 100% <laughs> like what happened to that frame when it was constructed all the way through the material to the inside of the frame. You don't know if there might be slight delamination, if there's areas where resin wasn't fully um, penetrating or uh, where maybe carbon fiber layers didn't get laid up thick enough. Um, there's a lot of unknowns and you don't really know. Whereas if you're taking a more traditional material like aluminum, steel, titanium, like those are standardized grades of aluminum and steel that are being sold on the market. So there's standard blends of steel and aluminum and titanium that most manufacturers are using. So you know that that material is the same all the way through. And another thing about steel, aluminum, titanium, you know, if you do have a failure, most of the time you're going to see, see that failure like visually with your own eyes, um, you're gonna see that crack or that dent, whereas carbon fiber can mask some of the damage. You know, you may actually have like a ruptured section of your frame, but it may not be visible from the exterior. It may be behind the paint. Uh, and I've had issues with that. I've also had issues with carbon fiber components snapping. And we're talking like name brand components, not necessarily off brand you know, eBay stuff from who knows where. So that's just kind of my personal take. So obviously take this with a grain of salt, but if you're not a World Cup cyclist, you know, riding at the top of your game, you need that ultimate craziest, lightest bike, but you're a rider who really wants to get out on the pavement, out on your gravel roads, your local trails, and be able to hit those trails day after day and have a bike that's gonna be reliable uh, going with those older traditional aluminum, steel, titanium materials are obviously going to be a little bit more of a secure investment, in my opinion. And the weight trade-offs today between modern aluminum frames and some of the carbon frames 
is minimal. I mean, we have specialized making some aluminum frames that are just insanely light. Obviously, Cannondale has been famous for making crazy light aluminum frames forever. And some of the construction techniques in aluminum have actually allowed those frames not to be as stiff and rigid as they used to be in the past and are allowing for a little bit of more flex and vibration dampening. I want to get back on the bike. What am I going to do? Um, I'm not a road cyclist that's racing. I'm not necessarily wanting to race mountain bike at like a professional level. I might want to compete on occasion. So I obviously want something that's going to perform good, but I don't need that crazy expensive carbon fiber that, you know, is going to save me a couple hundred grams on the entire build of the bike. So for my road bike, I actually went with a traditional steel frame and my justification for a steel frame, I'm like, okay, so this bike might be four pounds heavier than an aluminum or carbon equivalent fully built. But the cool thing about this bike, it's like the softest feel ever. And I almost think of it as, you know, it's the bike that I'm putting the most miles on for training. So it's almost like a weight training bike that way. You know, I get off this road bike and I jump on the mountain bike and I don't feel like my mountain bike is like a giant elephant trying to carry up a hill. It's a comparable weight. It kind of motivates me to want to get on the mountain bike because that mountain bike ride is actually going to be easier and more efficient for me. So that's kind of a crazy weird way of looking at it. It's kind of like those old school dudes on deck to bat in a baseball game and they've got like two bats swing in practicing it's probably horrible for your arms to be practicing with two bats but that's kind of my theory with this steel frame i'm like well worst case scenario it's like i'm just you know on deck warming up uh, but in reality this bike is not that much heavier than an aluminum or carbon counterpart but i'm getting crazy long life longevity with this frame i know that this frame is going to be good for 20 30 40 years you know as long as I don't run over it with a car or something. Um, but it's gonna be a great frame that's gonna last a long time and it's gonna be a smooth ride and that's really what I care about. I know I'm not gonna race, you know, category one races with this bike. So that was my choice. Um, and the same thing with my mountain bike, you know, when I built up this mountain bike to get back into cycling, I was like, well, first of all, I want something that's gonna be really fun but I also want something that's gonna last me a long time. You know, back in my earlier days when I was racing mountain bikes, I was getting a new bike every single season. So having a carbon fiber frame and the potential that it could maybe break during a race or something was not really a concern to me back then because I'm like, well, I'm only gonna race it for one year, so it doesn't matter. But being a dad now, I know that I need a bike that is gonna last me a while because I don't want to buy a new bike every year. I want one that's going to last me for a long time. And <clears throat> my choice to go with aluminum for my mountain bike was pretty simple because Specialized has made an awesome aluminum frame that is just crazy light. I think this frame is like 1400 grams, which is comparable to a lot of carbon hardtail frames right now. So I'm like, okay, if I'm going to build up a mountain bike, and get riding again, it'd be really fun to be able to, you know, build this bike up top spec, like, you know, XX, XO components, uh, specialized Roval wheels and Roval components and then a SID ultimate fork. Um, I wanted that in a bike. So when I was shopping for bikes, I'm like, okay, crap. If I want anything with that build level, it's automatically gonna be on a carbon frame and my minimum bike cost is going to be like ten thousand dollars for a new bike with that build spec so that kind of got me thinking i'm like well crap i'd like that build spec but in an aluminum frame and nobody is selling aluminum frames in a top level build spec so i um, went on the search all over the internet and found a chisel aluminum frame set and i'm like well screw it i, can I will just build up my own bike with all my own components and doing it that way, I was really able to build a super, super high-end bike with like World Cup level components on it, but with an aluminum frame for about half the price of what a carbon. And with that being said, I hope you guys had a great day. Get out and ride and 
like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I will see you guys later.